Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths and yet another little new series I'm starting because apparently I don't have enough of those already. So despite the fact that my From the Depths to-do list is a million miles long with tutorials and most wanteds and weird and wonderfuls and uh, streams and preparing for streams and preparing for all the aforementioned videos, and I've got a canoe tournament that I really should get around to doing. Um, I didn't feel like doing any of that yesterday, so I spent the whole day, and this is not really an exaggeration, I spent the whole day uh, planning weapons for a new battleship, the Starslung Mark III, because uh, I've had a recent run of, I guess, bad luck with the Starslung Mark II. It's just I've been pitting her against various things, against uh, against stuff on the workshop and stuff like that. And she's uh, she's not doing very well, so I think uh, it might be time to finally give her a very well-deserved retirement and make something new, possibly bigger, hopefully better. So here we are. This is, um, this is just kind of like... Well, you probably guessed by the title of the video already, but kind of a diary of sorts. So it's not like the usual let's build kind of thing. I'm not building stuff on screen. It's just showing off what I've done off screen and describing what the plan is. And hopefully where we can go from here. Because, yeah, like, uh, I don't know, just this might be a fun thing to try. Anyway, uh, so what we're looking at right now is the main guns, the main cram cannons uh, of this. And actually what really... I guess sparked the idea is like, hang on, this could be the Stalslung Mark III. It's the shape of the turrets, because this feels rather distinctive. Um, yeah, so these are APHE uh, crams, well, APHE frag. Mostly, it's mostly kinetic, mostly frag, just a little bit of uh, HE uh, for flavor, as people keep telling me to do, because it's a good idea. Um, yeah, pretty. they're pretty big, they're pretty, they're pretty chunky... Uh, pretty chunky guns, uh, super firing, and they have necks for once because, you know, like, I feel that, like, you know, you don't want to have super firing turrets uh, that are neckless. That just kind of doesn't work very well. So, yeah, the plan is uh, for this thing to have a three meter thick deck, and what exactly that deck is going to consist of, I'm not sure yet. Maybe just three meters of alloy, maybe a alloy metal alloy sandwich. Uh, maybe we'll chuck some slopes in there, just uh, just for giggles. And um, so yeah, these things are pretty strong. Uh, they are, I think, quite a bit uh, bigger and stronger than what's on the Star Sign Mark II. Hang on, I actually haven't compared uh, the two. Let's uh, chuck in uh, the Star Sign Mark II. Star Sign means Steel Snake, by the way. So yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, here's a. Uh, Here's the all. Oh, here is the Stalsung Mark II, very boxy turret. So let us save this over here. Let's see how big this is in comparison to these fellows. Oh yes, these are substantially bigger and taller actually. So uh, the I think the Stalsung Mark One. Uh, rather, I mean, the Starslung Mark II was a lot bigger than the Starslung Mark II as well. Yeah, this uh, this new one is probably going to have to be a lot less long. Uh, otherwise, my PC is going to cry a lot. So anyway, uh, also doesn't have the the camu, <laughs> moo, cow, camouflage. Uh, just because I was mucking around with this Arctic camouflage, which I'm really fond of. So you go away for a hot second. Um, also, I should mention before we dive into the internals that this uh, decoration work uh, on the barrel... Uh, this is not me. Um, this is actually done by a friend of mine, Ninja Ninja, who is an absolute wizard with deco. So if you're watching, hi Ninja, I love what you do. Uh, so over here, my Cram Tetris Petro, uh, blah, blah, Cram Tetris Petro. So we've got Ninja uh, Cram Barrels. So it's all kinds of uh, uh, fun, fun uh, things right here. So let's load that. Select. What the hell? No. Oh no. Okay. Cool. So it's all kinds of fun things. Uh, whoops. So that's uh, one example of it. So, oh. So let's get rid of that because that's not very good. And uh, yeah, so da -da 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 -da. I'll just show you some of them. So there's one. There's a one with a railgun cover, something like that. That one. I should use that one more often. 
And I should use all of them more often, actually. So there's one that looks like that. It's all kinds of fun uh, cram barrels. And that one I really like because it's got a muzzle brake on it. And I believe uh, the one on the uh, on these turrets is just where is it? So it's got a snake tongue muzzle. So it just looks like that. And I like it. It's very simple, but it looks really, really cool. And uh, it's very nice. Very nice indeed. So let's get rid of that and get rid of that and get rid of all that deco because we don't need any of that. So let's uh, let's actually shrink uh, the blocks and show you what's in here. So uh, big standard Tetris. I, I did have a go trying to do like uh, like proper three D Tetris in here, and I just stopped bothering after a while because it's like you know what this is really complicated. And there's way too many connectors in here and stuff like that. I really need to go figure out how to do good uh, six-connection 3D Tetris uh, with large-scale crams. Because it is possible. People do do it. I just don't tend to do it very often because I'm lazy. So there is a little bit of 3D Tetris up the top here. You've got, uh, you've got extra loaders up there. Just making sure that uh, the things on top actually have five connections uh, rather than just four. Super handy. And, yeah, the whole thing is just wrapped in, me in metal because uh, at this point, like, I, it's very hard for me to do an unarmored turret. Uh, the neck is... Alright, so, I know I just did a video the other day talking about poles and how they're terrible. Uh, I'm currently in the habit of using them without thinking, so that's not good. I probably should uh, replace these uh, with um, some kind of slope. Um... But I don't know, I think in this particular case it works kind of well because, uh, according to people who know armor, uh, better than me actually, like the best uh, armor gap filler is something like this. So it's just uh, these uh, beam slopes, like so. Um, because they're the best of both worlds, they have a uh, half health, and just as you uh, orientate them uh, horizontally like this, that is a very nice uh, angle, that 45 degree a slanted angle is uh, very nice for reducing kinetic damage and you can just uh, Very good. I guess for like a, the the side of a broadside for instance So I'm probably going to use that in the hull of this thing uh, It's somewhat more awkward when you don't have an exactly a four meter wide space uh, Which is our problem here in the turret uh, So there's poles in there for now. I'm probably going to swap them out uh, at some point, and I'm probably going to have to swap them out anyway for maybe heavy armor, because uh, I always tend to... It is actually, like, it's same up here uh, in the turret itself, actually. It's got a two meter layer of, uh, of metal, and then it's got uh, a layer, and then it's got, what is it? It's got a layer uh, of poles, and then another two meters of metal, and that is decent. It is decent, it's not perfect. Uh, but it does have, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, so it does have the odd heavy armor slope just here in the front. Uh, just, uh, just have a little bit of extra, and I probably have to, gonna have to swap that out a bit. So, nothing you're seeing in this video is final, I should mention. And this turret, uh, over here is exactly the same as the other ones, it's just taller, so it can, uh, a fire over the top of the other ones, so the actual or orientation of the guns on the ship will look something like this. Uh, you'll have uh, uh, this one and that one, and this one is clipping into the side of it, so please ignore that. And I should probably show you, well, let's look at the damage numbers again. So this is, I'll show you the fuses actually, that's a good idea. Okay, you go away for a hot second because uh, you are, you are bothering me and I don't like it. Uh, let's go find the fuse box of this thing. It's here, so... Uh, I am trying to move away from the whole uh, using timed frag all the time. Uh, because it has a rotten habit of exploding too early and not doing enough. So these don't have timed fuses. Uh, they're just inertial and they're just timed for first impact. And they're really strong actually, so... Uh, the shell health is like 270,501, so lots of shell health and lots of damage. Like, uh, the connect damage is probably a bit much, because uh, there's no level of armor in the world that has, um, well, no sensible amount, that uh, has about 365,471, like, health in total uh, for a layer. 
So that might be a bit overkill, but on the bright side, like all that, uh, all those hardener pellets mean that the shell has really good health. And uh, yeah, what can we say? So very high damage fragments as well. So the whole idea is that this thing sinks right into the middle of an enemy craft and explodes. And um, yeah, so 16,000 explosive damage is nothing to sneeze at either. And of course the frags just make a huge mess. Also, I tend to find that when this thing overpens, which it does a lot, uh, by the way, because just because it has so much KD, um, through the superstructure or something, like, it detonates anyway because of the time after first impact, and then the fragments poke holes and things, you know, anyway. So these are very, very strong, and let's, uh, let's test against the Meg, because the Meg is, uh, is my benchmark for this, uh, in general, so let's do this... And these things make a nice big muzzle flash. They also have uh, synchronized fire, by the way. So let's go here. This is number one. It doesn't have any kind of synchronization. Uh, but this one does. It fires after number one. And this one fires after number two. So synchronization is kind of a giant pain in the ass. And the main reason I've done this is just to stagger them all out of it so they don't... Uh, all land in exactly the same place because when you have damage numbers that high wasted damage happens a lot and it's very sad um, somehow how do you keep damaging yourself that's weird so if it fires again it should be able to get through the meg's defenses it can and it does yeah so uh these crams can uh poke holes right through the meg and it's already taken out a steam turbine it's, uh, what else has it done? I think this particle can... Nope, that particle can is absolutely fine. Yeah, it's uh, already... It's, uh, it makes a bit of a mess, let's say. Yeah, and it's... Yep, oh, well, I see railgun bits. I see, yep, so it's already damaged that... Uh, oh my goodness, where, where did that even go? Where did that even go? Like, what? Where'd it go? <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> Hard to tell where the holes are made, but yeah, so, um, that's just one of them, and that was a glancing hit, and the thing is already down, uh, 1% health, so, these are strong crams. Uh, how about we actually move to catch the Meg, please? Meg from accounting. Also, very important thing, is that with that, uh, kind of staggered fire, uh, because the AI is set to swap, uh, the target block every second, it means that it's actually likely to spread out the damage a little bit more. And yeah, there's uh, there's another turret damage. We're not getting incredibly good hits right now, but yeah, that's a... Uh, that is a... Uh, what is that? That's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... That's like an eighth of the railguns uh, down now. Which is not bad. And what I really want is to get like a nice shot uh, on the main body, because uh, that that looks brilliant. That looks lovely. Come on. Come on. Fire again, baby. Fire again, baby. You know you want to. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, that that turret is basically done by the looks of it. Well, okay. Not quite done yet. Not quite done yet. I must refrain from this whole video just being these cram shooting the Megalodon. Because I've actually... In about a day, I've done, I've built almost all the weapon systems that I want uh, for this, uh, for this craft. So, yeah, let's, uh, hopefully, okay, let's see here, what do you do? Oh, that looked good. That looked pretty, that looked pretty darn good. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's pretty darn good, because not only did that basically knock out this turret, uh, it's starting to threaten the AI compartment, and it's put holes... Uh, straight through the bottom of the hull, which is messing with the buoyancy. Yeah, the Meg is looking a little bit low in the water. Okay, one more volley, and then I swear we'll move on to something else. <laughs> I can't help it. Shooting the Meg is so is so satisfying, because it's like, Aha! Your defenses mean nothing, because I have ridiculously big cram cannons. Uh, these might miss. Oh, that is exactly the kind of shot... Uh, that I like to see because yeah, we're in there. We're in there deep Nice juicy internals uh, getting messed with That's one of the great things about um, About honking big cram cannons is because they tend to go through the deck armor um, uh, Rather than the side armor 
Okay, we, you get the idea. The, the Megalodon uh, can't defend itself against these crams. So these are nice big crams. I'm pretty proud of them. Uh, and now, but we can't have just crams. So I should mention that um, I'm wanting to challenge myself with this build by not spamming missiles. So I'm probably still going to have torpedoes and interceptors uh, and torpedo interceptors and stuff like that. But uh, the old Star Slung Mark II, which I will load in again, um, unfortunately is basically a missile cruise in disguise uh, with crams mostly for decoration and emotional support. Uh, because... Okay, no, that can be my bad. Uh, because a lot of the firepower of this thing is actually up here in the front. It's these kinetic missiles right here. So they're really simple. Active radar seeker, a signal processor, two reinforced bodies. And there's just a big volley of them. And these things end up doing most of the work. And I don't want that. Like, you know, I love missiles, but, you know, they are a bit of a crutch because they're a little bit too easy. And I don't want that uh, anymore. I want, to, I want to challenge myself a little bit and not just make a missile cruiser in disguise again. I want to, I want to enjoy the sultry scent of gunpowder. So, uh, that informs a lot of the design process here. So, alright, so... With that in mind, uh, one of the... I actually, I'll pull you back into the line again. One of the problems with the Star Slung is that she's kind of quick, uh, considering her size, uh, but she doesn't turn well because she's very long. Uh, 30 meters per second is decent for a surface displacement craft of this size, but she does tend to need to advance on enemies a lot because, you know, her broadside range is actually kind of short. Uh, let's go... Where is it? So, behaviors... What the... Oh no, that was the wrong thing. Uh, let's go here. Broadside 2.0. So actually, it's not even that short. It's just, it's just she doesn't turn well, and so she tends to need to sail in a straight line towards something. And because uh, her main APS is on the back, um, she's not good at fighting at a distance because she needs to close uh, once things get over like 2,200 meters away. And having two crams in the front is, like, kind of a waste of time, because they suck at shooting things at a very long range. Uh, so, uh, with this Star Slung Mark III, uh, the super-firing uh, cram turret, the big one, is actually going to be on the back. So, we're going to have one big cram in the front, two in the back, and instead of a super-elevating, uh, super super-firing cram in the front, we're going to have a super-firing APS. So, let's go over here, target arrangements... And let's go, so it's the four main APS. So this is exactly the same size uh, as that super firing cram. And it's just, it, this is a just general purpose anti-everything gun. It's uh, not, it's damage output isn't amazing. It's nothing like the crams, but it can shoot at pretty much everything and get away with it. So uh, muzzle velocity is over uh, 11,000, no, 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 no. It's over a thousand meters per second. Uh, 200 millimeter gauge, rate of fire is 326.5 rounds per minute, and it's firing AP heat because uh, th this just seems to work really well. AP heat is pretty good. It's just if it can't penetrate the armor, uh, it sends a heat stream through it, and if it does penetrate the armor, yay, we're into the good bits already. So, again, the Megalodon was my yardstick for this because this isn't the uh, this kind of gun is very good against late game uh, craft, especially if they're sitting in the water, because you just uh, build something like this, have super cavitating rounds, and then tell them to target blocks below the water, and then you can get straight into their innards. Um, which is a pretty good way of doing it, not the only way. Uh, blowing the Megalodon's guns off first uh, might be a very good idea. So, uh, it is uh, four connection Tetris in here, which is uh, nice and time consuming. Uh, it's got actually uh, more coolers than it actually needs, which um, just that's just because of how I've done it. And uh, same kind of uh, turret neck, by the way. So we've got, what do we got? We've got two layers of metal around the central cooling vent. We've got a layer of poles. Uh, slopes would probably be a better idea, especially since these are four meter slopes. So I might replace them with something like this. That might be a, that might be a better idea. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, and then two meters of uh, metal on the outside again. Again, I should probably replace these poles with heavy armor or something. And similar thing up here. This is actually the exact same turret cap. Uh, just uh, with different fillings and stuff like that. Uh, we've got just a regular, like, small elevation mantlet. Because, you know, when you repurpose 
a cram turret into an APS turret, like you don't have much room uh, for either an AI mantlet or an elevation mantlet, I might have to change that. Uh, this actually has decent enough elevation for most purposes, it's just it can't fire straight up and it can't fire straight down, which is kind of okay, really, because this is the distance weapon anyway. And uh, yeah, it's just got extra stuff in here. Uh, no spaced armor on the roof. Generally, I find you don't need that. But I, since this thing doesn't have... Well, it shouldn't have stuff poking over the top of it. Uh, it'll hopefully be okay. So let me demonstrate this against a submarine first. Uh, just so you can see what I'm on about. What's this? Uh, it's spawning a Wolin because the Wolin has given me grief in the past. And it's a pretty darn good submarine. So you can see... Whoops. You can see whoops, you can see me do a whoops. So you see this gun fires quite quickly, and because it's not a belt feeder, it's uh, it will fire continuously uh, until the target is dead or it is dead. So we're already getting some nice damage right there, so yeah, the heat doesn't care. I don't, a lot of uh, faction submarines don't really have any kind of spaced armor on them, uh, which means that this kind of shell does uh, quite nicely against them. Already lost 3% health. Although I think, let's see there, that applique could be a problem. Yeah, yeah, there's no real spaced armor in there, so... Yep, so we are making a bit of a mess. And the Volin is, by the looks of it, it's rising. Oh, it's got a siren! Oh, that's awesome! I'm so glad I did this. Now you're surfacing for some reason. Thanks for making this a lot easier. Uh, so yeah, that's a good anti-submarine gun. Uh, very, very nice. And now to show you what it does against the Meg, because Meg from accounting is just the best... Uh, I was about to say broomstick, but I actually meant measuring stick uh, for stuff like this. This might be a long video. So immediately we're opening fire, immediately we're landing shots. Uh, this isn't foolproof, by the way. Depending on which block you're aiming for, the lamb still might do stuff. Uh, that looked painful. What was that? Ah, we've zapped some laser bits. Or the Megalodon shot itself. It seems to do that a lot. See, we're just a uh, constant stream of block confetti. I should show you the stats on the shell, actually. It's, uh, it's decent. It's not amazing. And you can see that lambs is still zapping the odd shell. And I think, yes, so this is the heat shell uh, doing its uh, best work and living its best life because it hasn't got through the this very, very thick army yet, but let's see, where is it? Uh, but the heat stream is poking through and poking holes in the lambs, and this is uh, pretty darn important when dealing with the Megalodon or other uh, godly class ships is to shut down their defenses as much as possible so you can kill them faster so they don't kill you fast. This is very nice. This is a uh, this is good uh, megalodon killing. So we've got not one but two weapons uh, on the theoretical Star Sun Mark III uh, that can uh, give the Meg a hard time. Take that Meg. Take that Meg. I'm gonna say that a third time. Take that Meg. So yeah, the cram cannons can wipe things out above water, and this APS just uh, goes absolutely to town uh, on stuff below the waterline. Here we've got the problem of the, uh, the lambs uh, shooting those shells before they can uh, do their uh, very nice work. But you get the idea. So let me show you the stats on the shell, 200 millimeters. So let's go down to here. So kinetic damage is about 5,000. Expected armor pierces 30, which is pretty decent. It goes through... I don't remember. Mm, that's like, it's at least like two, maybe three layers of metal. And uh, 110 explosive damage, which isn't much. And then um, uh, heat penetration metric of 40, so this goes straight through heavy armor layers. And a secondary heat frag count of 8, and almost 3,000 damage each. So it's nice, Ducker. Let's see how the Meg's doing. The Meg is down 3% health, and if I had to guess, uh, there's some pretty vital components uh, that are missing right now. Let's see here. What's missing here? This is mostly just... Metal beams, I see a vent in there. See, the Meg's armor is just, like, through sheer thickness, is actually still kind of good. Because uh, you need to hit it 
on a direct line in order to uh, get it right in the right in the giblets, right in the giblets. Okay, so there's that, and also this thing can shoot down uh, things like the mobula and things like the uh, what's, it, what's it called, the exodyne and stuff like that. Fast stuff. This is a just good all-round, all-purpose thing. Not very specialized, but it can shoot at anything and get a decent result. Actually, I want to see because I haven't tested this. I don't think this will do anything against the singularity, but it's worth a shot um, because the singularity has a pretty decent lamps. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna do that. Let's see, is that gonna do anything? Oh my goodness, it actually managed to land. And yeah, nah, nah. Nah, this ain't working. Oh, hello. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, the awesome. We're actually doing something. We've managed to overwhelm the lambs of the singularity already. It's gonna take a really long time to get through the front armor of this thing, though, because the singularity is like, it's kind of ridiculous. Already zapped some of the smoke. Alright, so we can damage the Singularity. I don't think the Star Slug Mark III will be able to kill it. It won't be cost effective because crams are useless against this thing. Uh, unless you get really close, which isn't going to happen because this thing side strafes. Uh, what the? Uh, this thi yeah, this thing side strafes uh, really quickly. Let's see how, fa how fast are you going? Yeah, it's side strafing at 70 meters per second. The, the crams aren't going to do anything. And the lambs has recovered. That's annoying. Anyway, so we can at least scratch the singularity, and I guess that's okay. So moving on, that's uh, the other main weapon of the hypothetical Stalslung Mark III. So now let's go to... Oh yeah, so the, here we start with uh, the secondary weapons, the Sea Wiz. Uh, so these are not amazing, they're quite small, and this arrangement is probably quite similar to what's actually going to be on the ship itself, because... Uh, None of these are particularly strong individually, but I plan to spam them. They are just... Uh, what are they? They are just 1 meter uh, clip, 50 uh, millimeter guns, uh, with uh, heavy heads and uh, solid warhead bodies. No ejectors on here because I'm thinking, like... Uh, the damage done when destroyed is not actually that lot, uh, a lot, so it should probably survive getting the odd... Uh, auto loader destroyed. Actually, let's test that quickly. Let us test that with our death ray. Oh, yeah, let's do that. So, if I do this. Yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, like, wow, that, that that's actually just fine. It, uh. It, uh, survived that just fine, so it doesn't need ejectors at all. Phew, I'm glad about that. I would have been so scared. But anyway, so this is a combination close in defense and, uh, projectile defense, because, um,. Uh, these things have uh, something that I'm starting to really fall in love with. They have a combination Sea Wiz and local weapon controller, in this case, an all in one like, weapon controller that connects to the Sea Wiz. And it's got just my basic rule set, pretty much. Uh, these things are. I should show you the shell, actually, that's important. So these are super cavitation shells. Uh, so the plan is that these things can shoot both at airborne missiles and torpedoes, and also can shoot at, um, you know, whatever is in between those two things. They actually do pretty decent damage because, um, for their size at least, because 20 armor pierce means it does half damage to metal. These things fire pretty quickly, which means they can tear through metal beams uh, reasonably fast. Uh, expected KD to AP is um, actually pretty good, 16,000. Uh, the higher this number is, the better. That's the short, long and short of it. Expected muzzle velocity is very fast. Well, pretty fast for a gunpowder only shell. No rail guns yet. I might just replace um, some of the guns with rail guns because rail guns are something I should use more often, but I always forget to. Uh, so, over 1200 meters per second. And yeah, just shy, a little bit less than a thousand uh, kinetic damage at AP20. So. Let me show you what this thing is actually meant to do. So let us spawn in. I was using, uh, where was I? I was using the Banshee as a test for this. So these guys all open fire on the Banshee. And you see the numbers are picking up quite quickly now. So I'm gonna go over there. So it's actually knocking blocks off, especially since this thing is made of alloy. And they're not super good against swarms of uh, small missiles, as you might expect, because, um, well, they're little kinetic guns, uh, and you really do need something involved uh, with flak, so it is zapping en enough of them. 
And then the medium missiles are absolutely no problem, zaps all of them, and then the torpedoes come in, and it zaps all of them, uh, no problem. So this can shut down a Banshee just fine. Um, it can also, let's show you something else, it can take it on, where is it, 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 where is it? Where is it? Uh, so Iron Cordon, it's got no problem with that, it'll zap all those large missiles uh, straight out of the air. And uh, yeah, it's just in between missile volleys, it'll shoot uh, at the thing uh, that is uh, causing the missile problem in the first place. And we go zap, 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 there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, and... It ignored that friggin' cram cannon, which is annoying. Uh, which is fine because uh, those torpedoes hurt a lot more anyway. So these are doing uh, these are doing pretty good. They're also good against uh, fast aircraft. So let us spawn in. This is just an excuse for me to shoot things. Uh, where is it? Let's spawn in. Uh, I think the maelstrom might be a good example. Where is it? There's the maelstrom. I haven't tested against the Maelstrom. Uh, maybe this won't work very well. So, zapping the odd missile. Probably too many missiles uh, just for these sewers to zap. And it's dropping. What are those? I think those are. I don't know what those were. But yeah, so uh, these things are not designed to act on their own. They're going to be, uh, they're going to have other stuff with them as well. Uh, in particular, there's going to be a big honking big lamb system on this. Maybe I should uh, stick a flak a sea whiz on here that can go in the middle and just flatten uh, large swarms of missiles. That might be an idea. Yeah, so pretty decent little things. They don't actually fire as fast as the as the main secondary. Uh, the main secondary APS, but that's okay because there's six of them. Uh, six per side, in fact. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Also, can still uh, scratch the paint on the mech, which is absolutely fan dabby dozy The armor on these turrets is rubbish, by the way. It's just, it's two layers of metal. Heat shells will go straight through this. Um, because it's kind of difficult to make uh, really heavily protected uh, secondary guns, because then they get too big and you can't fit them on your deck. Uh, so yeah, so there's that, and here's the other secondary uh, weapon. Uh, actually, there's a lot of secondary weapons in this. Uh, so this, I am embarrassed to admit, is something that I have a problem with, and I'm probably going to do something different, because these are self-contained lasers, uh, which I like to do. And yes, that is a uh, laser optics disguised as a cram barrel, because I have a problem. Uh, this is something that I love doing. In fact, uh, this kind of uh, pump tetris... Well, it is Tetris. It's uh, actually based uh, on the four-connection uh, APS Tetris that we uh, that I showed off earlier. That well, I didn't come up with that Tetris, by the way. It, somebody, some nice person, straight up told me how to do it, which tends to be uh, the case here. So this is terrible. Don't do this uh, if you actually want good meta results. I just do this because it helps me wrap my mind around how much room I need for a laser. Uh, helps me plan ahead. Uh, this has a ridiculous amount of uh, frequency doublers, so it's very expensive. Uh, how much? How expensive are each of these turrets? They're very pricey, actually. I should probably get rid of some of them. Yeah, there were 140,000 materials each, uh, which is probably too much. And uh, yeah, they have this long neck because these are designed to fire over uh, the super firing uh, turrets. So both the cram and the aforementioned big APS. Uh, they're just behind them, so we've got one fore, one aft, uh, 360 degree laser coverage, and these are also combination SeaWiz and local weapon controller, because they can shoot down missiles, uh, and uh, they shoot down, you know, other stuff as well. Uh, but, and this is a very last second decision, uh, the main function of these lasers is to take down suicide craft, so if you have something like... Uh, let's go over here, the ICBM, so like this. Um, that, the main job of these guys is to aim straight up in the air and take out these really annoying things, because uh, otherwise they ruin your life. So zap, 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 zap. So that's ten of them fried instantly. 
uh, which is very, very good. That's their main job, is to do that really quickly. Uh, they can shoot down missiles as well, and I'm going to demonstrate that with a submarine. Where's the submarine? They're not particularly good at uh, dealing with submarines. Um, I mean, with missiles, it's just they don't have the damage output for it. Uh, lasers, uh, uh, blah, blah. Laser combiners generally don't. Where's the sub? Where's the sub? I think the Remora uh, chucks missiles. Oh, it does. Okay. So you are now not firing at the Remora anymore. Uh, but the missile should come in. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's a. There's a lot more. So it does. If it's got nothing else to do, it will shoot down missiles. Um, but it's much better at dealing with uh, other things. Huh. Those missiles were out of range. How silly. All right. Let's uh, let's see another volley again because that's fun. Zap 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 zap. So it does absolutely fan Debbie Dozy against uh, against smaller missiles. Uh, against uh, there's not really much point showing it off against an Iron Cordon or something like that because it will aim, it will prioritize aiming at enemies rather than missiles. So yeah, that's their main job. Otherwise, they're not incredibly good. Uh, I don't think they're very good. Like this turret is kind of solid, uh, but yeah, they don't really have spaced armor in here. So. Hopefully these don't get shot at. So it protectors up here. It's got whoopsie daisy. It's got uh, its own munition wallers up here. I do like how it looks. Mainly I like how this looks. Looking at this makes me happy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think it's a. Uh, it's not the best laser I've ever made, and it's certainly not the best laser like you will find ever. So yeah, that's the that's the laser. And now we get to a fun thing, uh, because as aforementioned, uh, I don't want to rely on missile spam. So. I want to spam something else, and I'm still working on that. So, here are some mortars I've made. So, cram mortars are very, very fun, and I particularly like these guys because I just like um, a little bit of. Ah, oh, damn it, I did that deco wrong, actually. Uh, why do I only notice this now? Little corners poking out. But anyway, so this is something that I do uh, with cram mortars because it just makes them uh, convenient uh, to place and calculate. Again, I like sticking things on turrets all the time. So this is, again, it's bog-standard diamond tetris. Uh, so it's just got that, them pellets in the middle. That's connected, right? Yes, it is. Good. Uh, it's just, uh, it is uh, APHE. Right, so let's show you the fuses. So it's uh, got time for a first impact. It's got inertial and also it's got an altitude fuse. So I tend to find that is a good idea with mortars because it means that if they uh, go through a hole that's already been made in a ship, they explode. Uh, just below the waterline and hopefully still do something. Uh, damage isn't amazing because these things are not particularly big. They are max gauge. Uh, max gauge. That's a good action hero name. Uh, but yeah, so rough, uh, just under 20,000 kinetic damage, 20 AP, and again, just under 20,000 explosive damage. So these things do hurt. And you might be wondering why I've painted them garish colors. Well, that is because uh, they are synchronized. So... Uh, this one right here, the one that's red, uh, ID1, uh, these guys aren't synchronized with anything, but uh, let's go here, ID2, uh, this one's synchronized with ID1, and this one is synchronized with ID2, and this one is synchronized with ID3, and I've just essentially copy and pasted those turrets down, so now we have a whole bunch of turrets which fire in staggered, uh, staggered four, so yeah, it's all kind of relying on that... Uh, on that one turret over there, so it's not perfect, uh, but uh, but it will do quite nicely. So mortars are not the best idea, perhaps for a craft that you want to take on the late game because they're very specialized. They can only really hit things that are slow and move predictably and at surface level. If they change altitude, forget it. You're not you're not going to hit them ever. Uh, but it's, uh, it is, uh, let's, uh, they do hit things eventually. So let's, uh, spawn in a bulwark, uh, because that works. So these things are fun, because they do have that, uh, times four staggered fire. Which again, just like with the main crams, it, uh, increases the likelihood that they'll hit in different spots. And that's very important for mortars, because, uh, they miss a lot. You can already see they're kind of following a different path. 
So yeah, the first volley pretty much always misses. So mortars are pretty lousy alpha strike weapons because the first shot's gonna miss. It's a uh, you really, if anything uses mortars, it needs to be tough enough to be able to survive um, initial shots of anything. So right now, these uh, second shots are good, and we have managed to uh, take out an AI turret on the other side of the bulwark, which is very nice. Bulwark isn't the best uh, yardstick uh, for this, because the bulwark is, I don't know, it's uh, 500, like less than 500,000 materials. It's not really in the weight class, uh, as the Style Sun Mark III is going to be. Uh, but it is uh, decent enough to show what these mortars will do uh, against something that hits it. Why did you stop firing? Oh no, you just moved out of range. So I'm go I'm going back and forth on having mortars on this craft at all. I might do something completely different. Uh, these things can't touch the Meg, by the way, because the Megalodon's lambs is way too strong. It can actually get them on target, though, which is impressive. So we... Oh, so important to have that second fire. And APHE mortars, uh, I didn't, I was skeptical about them at first, but if, you know, this is what they do. They just sail down through the deck of something and they blow massive holes uh, in the underside. So, in a weird way, hitting something from the top with these things is a great way to hit them from underneath. So, let's uh, have one more volley. These things are fun, and they'll be really good against uh, static fortresses. Uh, so things like, what's it, the Raven's Nest or the Great Talons, which take a million years to kill. Uh, that'll be really nice. They're also death to turret caps, because uh, most turret caps are not designed to get hit from above. So, yeah, these are okay, and um, they are pretty indivi cheap individually. So, whoops, let's go there, let's go there, let's go here. Let's, oh, no, not this bug again. Ah, damn it. That's a very annoying uh, bug. Uh, that means you can't select uh, sub objects. So let's go there, let's go to the vehicle, cram mortars. Sometimes this fixes it, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I am an alpha test, by the way, which means that things are always kind of janky. So, uh, 70, uh, just over 7,000 materials. That's one of the great things about uh, cram cannons, is that uh, they are cheap. So, uh, 7,000... Uh, let's say 8,000, let's round it up, so compared to a missile of the same size, a large missile in particular. A large missile, like, the f the freaking launch pad is already 2,400, and then 800, all the way up to where the deck is. Uh, this whole thing is like, let's actually prefab this and... Uh, just one of these guys, actually, let's put... Identify friend of foe, and width, and length, and whoops, that's a bit too much, and there, save as placeholder, so, how much is that? That's 11,000, just, uh, just one large missile is 11,000, and one of these things is way less than that, admittedly, this does a lot more, so this is the problem with trying to wean yourself off missile spam, is that missiles are just so useful. Like, you know, they do they do a lot of damage and they might have miss in the name, but miss is generally what they don't do. So yeah, so one last uh, fortress showing off uh, what I'm trying out is long, long ago, in the misty mists of time, uh, I was watching a tournament. Uh, by Menti, if you don't know who Menti is, M-E-N-T-I, uh, he does From the Depths tournaments, uh, pretty regularly, uh, be starting another big one pretty soon, I am not entering, but, uh, you can, uh, I should probably, I should probably post a link to his channel, uh, now that I've mentioned him, that is our obligatory shout-out for the day, but anyway, he loves cram cannons, uh, he is a fellow cram gunner, so that's very nice, and, um, Long ago, in one of his earlier tournaments, there was a craft that I think ended up winning, and it did something very novel uh, with its cram cannon arrangement. It had them basically all able to fire over each other simply because their profile was so low. So, uh, that is my... This is my attempt at that. Uh, it's way too many of them. I don't think I'm going to stick with this. Uh, but, uh, this is exactly the same cram cannon as the mortars. It's just not firing straight up. It's uh, more level, so... If I uh, basically hide Deco here, actually, yeah, I'm just gonna, whoops, I'm gonna delete all and delete all. 
Uh, this is the top of the turret, and you might think this is insane uh, because the firing piece is exposed. And you're right, this is insane. You should probably never do this for your main guns. In fact, you should definitely not do this for your main guns. Uh, but here's the thing. This thing is only one block tall, and it has a nice a heavy barrel end uh, in front of it, and it has uh, metal beams on either side of it. Like, I probably could actually add uh, just an extra little beam right there, uh, just to bulk it up a little bit more. But basically, uh, this is relying on the fact that this thing is one, the above deck, it is one meter tall, and not including the barrel, it is only three by three um, meters wide and long. So, this thing isn't really likely to get hit, and uh, if you have a lot of them, like this, uh, you can just kind of uh, saturate, uh, bombard enemy craft, and because uh, they can all fire over each other, because they can do that, um, you can have kind of like pseudo mortars, in a sense, that hit more reliably, because they do. Uh, these are hollow point uh, kinetic crams, by the way. Lousy accuracy, because the barrel's very short. Uh, so let's show there. It's a reconfigured loadout. It's all hardness, a little bit of uh, payload compactor. Uh, but the thump damage is a roughly uh, around 31.62, so they do great against metal. And like I said, like they all fire over the top of each other. Uh, let's uh, chuck in an iron cordon. Uh, this is probably more than I'll ever stick on any ship ever. So they all arc. And they all fire over each other like that because they're all nice and short. I should mention as well, their muzzle velocity is limited to 180 meters per second, which means these shells are only slightly faster than the mortars that they might replace. Uh, they're horribly inaccurate, uh, but that the thing is, is that if you hit, um, if you try and hit the entire ocean at once, you're guaranteed to hit your target, so... And uh, yeah, they do do a fair amount of thump damage. It's not great. This is real real saturation kind of stuff and also this can't get through the megs uh, defenses either i do love it that's a 360 radar deco right there by the way i do love these turret caps they've uh, i think they're really i think they look really good really good really simple but yeah low velocity plus horrible inaccuracy means they really do miss a lot so i'm probably not going to stick with these either but it is a fun thing to try out and uh, in particular, like, if you're going to enter a tournament uh, that mostly has cram cannons uh, in it, uh, this is a great way to make maximum use of your deck space, because um, this is a lot of them. I might try, I'll try other things, that's part of the whole point of this whole diary thing, is that I want to try stuff, and I'll, I'll let you know uh, how things go. I probably could replace them with a... Uh... Oh, I should mention why I uh, decided to go pure kinetic hollow points for these. Uh, that's because it uh, maximizes the amount of damage it does to armored things, and also, uh, what I had before was a timed frag, so it's basically just airburst frag non-stop. Uh, but uh, that didn't work very well because the shells didn't have much health and they didn't do much damage and they still missed a lot. So maybe I should do, maybe I should make these AP frag or something like that. Uh, but these, because they have more health, they can at the very least some of them can get through the lambs on the stronghold, which is a uh, a decent goal, actually. So, the problem also is, is because they don't have any fuses, because they, what's the point, they're hollow points, uh, they get bounced off shields a lot, so that's not very good. Also, randomly, you get um, some of them that just whiff, like, way high over the target, and I have no idea why they do that. That's kind of annoying. So, yeah, that's, uh... I haven't tested all of these weapons uh, in combination yet, I probably should. Uh, just to see how well they work together. Uh, I'm betting that um, they'll all work a lot better when they're actually all, you know, in the same... Uh, firing at the same target, because they kind of, you know, make up for each one's shortcomings. In this particular case, um, uh, I think I probably could... Uh, these combined with the main prams uh, probably could put serious dents onto the Meg. Uh, good old Meg from accounting. Uh, simply because... Yeah, it's just like, the lambs will get distracted by the big grams. And, yep, we have successfully disabled that missile turret. So, yeah, this is real cram spam kind of stuff. Also, these uh, these little turrets are still kind of cheap. And so, placeholder there, there's just over 7,000 uh, materials. And that's just because the barrel is slightly longer. And saturate uh, the area. It is nice to have something this inaccurate because they're almost guaranteed not to hit the same spot. 
we appear to have taken out an important part of the land. They're doing actually way better against uh, the stronghold than I was anticipating. So yeah, now I'm going to finish off uh, with uh, closing thoughts. Will this video have timestamps? I don't know. And uh, let's just shoot at the stronghold uh, with the main crams because that's hilarious and fun and I can watch crams fire at things all day, every day. So let's spawn in our friend the stronghold and just watch these crams absolutely go to town on it because it'll be so good. I feel good. Da -na 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 -na. I knew that I would now. So bang, bang, bang. There go the crams. You see by the traces, these are these are very crammed crams. And we've immediately done something. Well, not that devastating, but th that's a that's a lot of compartments that have been uh, slightly ruined, just a little bit. Also, AP Frag um, does great against things uh, like the Stronghold that uh, have big empty spaces in here because it doesn't matter. The frags can still reach deep, deep into the guts of the thing. So yeah, I do like the way uh, the progress on the Stully Three is going. Um, a lot of work to be done, of course, because, like, the more care you take uh, in the designing of the thing before you actually start building the hull itself, uh, the more problems you'll save later. It's like I said in my tutorial on building things big, plan ahead. The more you plan ahead, uh, the better you will do. And I probably should also test uh, the, the other active defenses that I'm going to have on it as well. In particular, the lambs uh, that it's going to have, because it needs a very good lambs. It needs the best lambs possible. That's not reaching particularly deep into... It's not reaching particularly deep into the stronghold, is it? Eh, uh, well. Oh, uh, well. So, yeah, do let me know what uh, what you guys think uh, about this. Uh, I guess this could be a new series, or it could just, you know, like, never show up again. Depends on the view count, depends on what you say. And, um... Yeah, let me know your thoughts on what I've been doing so far. If you have any better ideas, I almost guarantee you uh, that people will have better ideas than what I'm doing. In particular, to do with the armoring of the turrets and the lasers. The lasers are the lasers are decent. I should probably get rid of most of the frequency doublers because my goodness, that's that that's just silly. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely that. Also, if you have any idea how we can uh, do something cool. Uh, with a lot of the deck space that doesn't involve missiles, because, you know, we need more darker. More darker, I say. Wow, the stronghold is having a horrible day. But we're having a very good day, because we're shooting things with crams. And it's really fun. So, on that jolly note, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon, or YouTube membership if you- Oh my goodness, that's filled the whole screen. Uh, support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths and maybe even a Battleship Diary. Farewell.